Kia ora team, welcome back to the 2.6 video series. Video 8 is the last video and it's about Gauss's competitive exclusion principle. And you're learning about this principle exclusively at Arataki. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to discuss Gauss's principle using the Rimu, Northern Data and Perching Lily as examples. And you should be able to discuss Gauss's principle in terms of forest stratification. So we previously learned about Gauss's competitive exclusion principle, which states that two different species cannot occupy the same ecological niche in a habitat and stably coexist. Two species with the same exact niche will directly compete for the same resources like light, space, nutrients and water, and one species will ultimately outcompete the other. And also in our last lesson, we learned how the northern rata starts off as an epiphyte using the host rimu tree to get access to more sunlight at a higher layer in the forest. But then it sends its roots down to the ground and begins to really compete with the host rimu tree for sunlight, water and nutrients from the soil as well as space. See here, we've got two different species occupying the same ecological niche. And according to Gauss's principle, two species occupying the same ecological niche can't stably coexist. According to Gauss's principle, one of these species will outcompete the other. So what do you think is going to happen? Who's going to outcompete who? Usually, the host Rimu tree is old, definitely much older than the northern rata around it. So the northern rata ends up outliving the host Rimu tree. This is because the younger northern rata tree is more robust and it can outcompete the Rimu. As the host Rimu tree dies and the northern rata tree takes over the space, it replaces the Rimu and its role in the ecosystem as an emergent tree. This is such a great picture to show that. You can see that the, this is the host Rimu tree up here and it's dead because it's got no leaves left. And around it is the rata tree and it's replaced the rimu in the ecosystem as an emergent tree. So how come epiphytes like the perching lily don't compete with their host rimu tree? Well perching lilies and rimu occupy different ecological niches and because they occupy different ecological niches they're not in direct competition with one another and they can stably coexist. They don't occupy the same ecological niche because perching lilies and rimu tree don't absorb water and nutrients from the same soil. Rimu trees absorb water and nutrients from the soil on the ground, whereas perching lilies absorb water and nutrients from the soil that's accumulated up in the tree trunks or in branches where the perching lily is. Because remember I said that the perching lily has a central root system, a structural adaptation, and water is directed into the V-shaped leaves that act like a funnel and that has a central root system and that it can make its own soil. Insects breed and die within the central root system and leaves fall and decompose within the central root system to provide the perching lily with its own soil, with its own nutrients. And so as a result of these adaptations, the root and leaf adaptations, the perching lily doesn't have to send roots to the ground. And therefore, it doesn't have to compete with a host rimu tree for nutrients and water. Because they occupy different niches, the perching lily and the host rimu can coexist stably. And you've seen the slide before. This is the perching lily with its V-shaped leaves, its central root system, um, and its own soil. Similarly, rimu and the epiphyte version of northern rata are able to coexist stably because they occupy different niches. Specifically, remember that I told you that northern rata have tuber-like swellings on its roots that help with water storage, and so it's not in direct competition with its rimu host for water. But once the northern rata establishes a complex root system and the northern rata and its rimu host now occupy the same ecological niche, they're now in fierce and direct competition. They cannot stably coexist. The northern rata has adaptations that give it an advantage 
allowing it to outlive and outcompete its host, Rimu Tree. I'd like to conclude this series of lessons by going back to why stratification is so important. And this is how you should conclude your report. Okay? Stratification is a vertical layering in a forest community where each layer or each strata has a different microclimate. This increases the number of niches available to be occupied by plants. Because there are more niches, there's less interspecific competition. Because there's less interspecific competition, more species can coexist stably, linking that to Gauss's principle, right? This increases the number of species in a forest community and increases biodiversity. Now, um, biodiversity is how many species you've got in your community. The more, the better. High levels of biodiversity is awesome because it makes an ecosystem more resilient to changes in the climate. Forests with high levels of biodiversity are more likely to, to survive and recover from a disastrous event than a forest with low levels of biodiversity. The more species, the better. And stratification allows more species to coexist in the same environment, the same forest. So I'd like to check your understanding for the last time. Question one, which species could you use to discuss Gauze's principle in your assessment report? A. Rimu, B. Perching Lily, C. Northern Rata, D. All of the above. Question two, how do the Perching Lily and Rimu tree coexist stably? A. Both benefit from a mutualism relationship. B. They compromise, but they're both harmed in the process. C. Perching lily has adaptations to occupy a different niche. D. They cannot coexist as they're directly competing for light, water and nutrients. Question 3. How do the northern rata and rimu tree coexist stably? A. They both benefit from a mutualism relationship. B. They compromise. They're both harmed in the process. C. Northern data has adaptations to occupy a different niche. And D. They cannot coexist as they are directly competing for light, water, and nutrients. In this case, I'm talking about the Northern data adult. Okay, the adult. Question 4. Why do the mood trees succumb, they lose or die, when encircled by the roots of other tree species? A. Rimu trees are much older and less robust. B. Their ability to transport water and nutrients to foliage is weakened. C. They are overshaded by the invading species. Or D. All of the above. And last question, question 5. Stratification leads to A. Increased biodiversity. B. More ecological niches. C. Less interspecific competition and D, all of the above. Kapa, you've reached the end of the 2.6 video series. By this lesson, you should be able to discuss Gauss's principle using Rimu, Northern Rata, Perching Lily as examples, and discuss Gauss's principle in terms of forest stratification and biodiversity. Thanks for watching, and all the best for writing your report draft.